Sick. Hey, listen, great. Um, we're going to jump into this. Um, I had my other computer on, uh, Rookie Move. I've only been doing this for a decade. Nothing like starting out a conversation to say, let's talk about a decade of learning how to do these sort of things and start by messing up. Um, so listen, I'm Dave McLeod. I'm the CEO of a company called Thought Exchange. Uh, if you've participated in other events, um, we've already probably used a few exchanges. I'm going to try to do something a little bit different in this, um, see if I can. Um, get to some interesting ahas for all of us together. I see there's about 70 of us, it's fantastic. Um, I'm gonna actually try something a little bit different in, in this uh, time we have together. So what are we gonna do here is I'm actually gonna have a chance to um, offer you a chance to participate to start. And then I'm gonna take, talk about why I did that. Um, and then we're gonna actually at the end be able to hopefully turn this into some insights that we can take away. And I'm gonna do this in the following way. Um, I'm gonna ask you actually to um, join in to a conversation. This is the very first thing you do. I'm also gonna take this link and put it in the chat. But if you actually take out your, your phone, um, you can participate. I'm gonna actually put this in. The question I want to ask is this group. We have uh, 80 people here, fantastic. Um, the question is, what do we most wanna be remembered for as leaders when we come out the other side of COVID? And I actually want, before I talk for a long time, um, Stacy doesn't have a phone, don't worry, um, because I'm gonna put this in the link as well. It just means you can, you have to navigate away. So you can go in and press that link. Um, and I'd like you just to share some thoughts and then consider some thoughts of other people on what do you wanna be remembered for when we come out the other side of, of COVID and everything else. And I just wanna talk about a few things that come up before we keep going. So the number one thought here that resonated with this particular group uh, I cared for my team's overall well-being and cleared the way for them to focus on it. This is important, but health cannot be replaced. Um, this is something that we agree on, and I don't think as a planet can agree on anymore right now. Uh, I haven't been on a call that doesn't start with how you're doing, and you actually mean how you're doing. Um, so that's fantastic. The next one, conscious, compassionate leadership that puts people first. Um, that's a really great thought. We're moving into a new way of working where people matter more than profits, where teams are built and nurtured instead of just used. 100% agree. Um, how we help our community and become stronger as a company. Um, yeah, how you, how you treat people now will be remembered for a really long time. Um, providing positivity and inspiration for my team. I think we can explore you know, what that actually means a little bit. I'm gonna go through just a few more of these and then we're gonna go a little bit um, further. This is, this is a, uh, we're gonna talk about this in the margarita context. I promise we're gonna talk about margaritas. Um, but we're gonna talk about true leadership, trust, authenticity, balance, fairness, agile, planning. Uh, this is the potpourri winner that uh, in the margarita land, this has a chance coming up because these are the qualities that people, it's hard not to resonate with those things. It's a fantastic thought. Um, and making sure people feel valued. And so that's actually where I want to go right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually transition right now on this, this notion of people feeling valued. Because uh, for many of you, I looked at the poll prior, uh, many of you have been working remote for a long time. Um, I've been doing it for about 15 years. Uh, our company has about 150 employees and we were founded just about 10 years ago. We've been remote since day one. Um, and so I think a lot about what it means to, to connect with people um, and, and it, I think one thing that people really need to get in a really deep and meaningful way is that remote and connection are not um, separate concepts. And that, you know, when we have a great Glassdoor rating and a lot of respect and appreciation in our company, um, I think it comes from this thought right here, making people feel valued. So actually before, again, I'm, I'm being meaningfully uh, cryptic in my presentation, I'm actually gonna get us to think together again. So I, I share my screen one more time, um, this time, it's actually about the sorts of things that um, characterize excellent one-on-one -on -one interactions with people. And so what I want to do um, is, again, I'm going to take this in and Shannon will correct me if I mess this up. Shannon, maybe you can take that link and put it in the chat as well, please. Um, so here's the thing I want you to do is, as we're thinking about remote meetings, and we're going to get to margaritas, um, I want us to think about what it what makes a face-to-face -face interaction amazing. Um, before we go to thinking about how to make meetings amazing, I just want us to think together about what is it that makes face-to-face -face, um, 
interactions, what sort of things characterize amazing one-on-one face-to-face interactions with your colleagues and with your peers? Kate. So I'm gonna close that. Um, I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna address some things we hear and I'm gonna talk about why, why I shared these things. Um, so here's the thing is that we're talking about um, remote meetings and how to make remote meetings um, fantastic. And uh, the question I asked is what makes a one-on-one face-to-face interaction fantastic? And um, here's the number one thing, empathy and trust above all. I love this. I completely adore this thought. Nonverbal changes the impact and motivation. So the idea that empathy and trust um, rule above all, the thing I'd like you to think about as we go through this is that the nonverbal communication, the ability to see the emotion during an interaction, um, there was a lot of thoughts in this exchange about expressions, about body language, and things like that. Um, and and that uh, people need to be able to verbally express their thoughts and feelings, and their body, bodies often do. And so I'm going to start to unpack why I put this into a session about remote meetings. Like for, for us in Thought Exchange, we have a video on as, uh, as much as possible. If you're in a group meeting, even if it's all 150 of us, videos are on. Why is that important? Well, because it's the same thing that's important in any face-to-face meeting. Um, actually connecting with people is really meaningful one-on-one. It's the thing that actually you all know how to have amazing uh, remote meetings. And that is think about the things that you want from a leader that uh, that they have when, when you're actually expressing anything to them one-on-one. But here's another. Um, Connecting with a person as a person um, before seeing them as their role. So here's the thing is that lots of people right now are going through things like um, like reductions in force, like people taking reductions in their paycheck, all sorts of scary things happening in organizations right now. And here's one thing I think that um, the amount of times that I've got advice from people that have said to me, uh, you know what you need to do? You need to really have your carbs close to your chest when you're making decisions. Uh, and you really have a hard time to actually, uh, you don't want to share too much with people about um, about how people are, how you're actually feeling as a leader. Um, I just think that's total bullshit. I think that actually the other side is that with, with people, uh, as a CEO that has been uh, known to cry in public more than once, um, and even a few uh, days ago, I was talking to our staff about the fact that right now, we just raised a bunch of money, everything, we're just actually exploding forward, about to hire a bunch of people. And I was pretty upset by the fact that right in this moment when I want to be rewarding people, I had to hold back on our raises in the company right when people deserve them more than ever. Um, and it sucks. But here's the thing is I think right now more than ever, we need to trust that people can handle the truth, they can handle actual conversations and that you value them as a person and you're forgetting about them as the role and the notion that somebody who's junior can't accept the truth of what's happening as a company from a financial perspective, I think needs to be challenged. I think open and uh, open, honest conversation with people couldn't be more important than right now um, so that you can have these conversations. So as a leader, here's the thing I want to challenge you is that you notice right now, I don't actually have any slides because what didn't come to the top right now? What are the sort of things that didn't rise up as the most important things when you're having a really meaningful one-on-one interaction? What didn't come up is amazing slides. What didn't come up was a really crisp agenda. What didn't come up um, is a well-timed cadence so and giving people the ability to take a poll halfway through. What does come up is people want to be heard. People want to be listened to. People want to be connecting with you, thinking together, and actually resonating with you. That's what matters in a meeting. And it doesn't matter if it's a face-to-face one-on-one interaction or if it's a video interaction with people. They want you to share your heart, and they want to actually be able to connect with you. And they want to see as a leader I should hope if something sucks that when you deliver that, you should break out crying because if you're not sad, probably you're not doing what you would do in a one-on-one meeting, which actually gives you the chance to say, what is the, um, what's the point of this interaction if I'm not actually connecting with you on the human level? And what I see happen is in so many virtual meetings, people go, well, I don't have to run a great meeting. I have to have amazing visuals. I have to have an amazing slide deck. I have to have amazing poll in the middle yet they don't spend enough time thinking about, I need to connect with people as a human, speak from my heart, um, communicate the hardest thing, think about the thing I don't wanna share to everybody, go ahead and say that thing. Um, Figure out what everyone thinks about really hard topics, ask people about their concerns, and stay on that human level. So I just wanted to um, 
think that as well. So here's the thing. Um, so right now as a company, we're like in fundraising mode. So we're, we're out raising money right now. Um, and staying as present as possible, we have, we have weekly meetings where I give people an update and I don't actually give them the plans, I give them an update. I say, this is what's happening, this is what I heard in the last few minutes. Now I'd like to know, um, what do you all think? Um, being present um, is probably the most powerful thing as I'm a CEO, I have 150 staff, but I tell you each time I share something I actually feel in the moment and ask people for um, feedback on what I'm feeling in the moment, the more, times I do that, the more feedback I get that people feel respected. And the more you can actually include people in your decision people by asking for their advice, the more you're showing you respect them, the more you're helping build the connection you need to run amazing remote meetings. So here's, here's why I uh, set it up this way, is that I think there's a lot of um, people talking about technology and a lot of people talking about process and a lot of people skipping over the human element of, of vulnerability and the ability as a leader to actually share your heart in the hardest moments becomes how you treat people now will be remembered into the future. So in our first exchange, we said, listen, um, what do we want to be remembered for? And then when we think about remote meetings, we're saying, well, I want to be remembered as a person that when we were remote, I showed up, I showed up on video, I shared, I shared over time, I actually shared when I was happy, I shared when I was pissed off, I actually became more human through this interaction. So I just wanted people to consider Remote meetings are actually an opportunity to share your heart in a way that maybe wasn't even possible before because maybe you weren't doing bi-weekly video, full video conversations with your team before and you are now. And so maybe you have an unprecedented ability right now to actually speak from your heart for the people that you care about. We can connect with our customers every week now. They come on and share their stories on video about their concerns. It's, been, it's actually deepened a connection from a heart level with people. So I just wanted to put that in as a consideration as we're thinking about this. So finally, the end of this presentation is actually to do um, one more exchange where I get your thoughts and questions before we wrap up on the top of the hour. So in the final exchange, it's what are your thoughts and questions you have about what we covered here today? Basically, uh, to summarize, we talked about A, the fact that we want to be remembered for being amazing humans and put people first. B, remote meetings our ability to treat people with respect and empathy and show up with visual cues and words and thoughts and feelings as a vulnerable leader, you said it yourself, making eye contact, talking, being honest with people is critically important. And, and finally, that's actually the recipe to be able to actually figure out what matters to people. So Shannon's gonna put in uh, the link, I hope. And we'll do one final exchange. Well, I'll just get your thoughts and questions about uh, how we thought together today about the notion of showing up as a leader. Amazing, all right. So we have uh, nine minutes left here and um, I'm just gonna take a chance to go through a few, um, a few of these. Brian, reach out. We wanna make sure that we get you that. Um, yeah, so for those of you here, um, Part of this is what Thought Exchange did as a reaction to open our doors. Um, we normally charge, you know, ten or twenty thousand bucks for Thought Exchange. We actually opened it up for people to use free of charge um, during this time. And, and if you haven't heard from us real soon, Brian, um, you have my contact. Reach out on LinkedIn. Um, you should get that real soon. So first of all, I'm going to start with this thought. It's fantastic. Um, leaders should show empathy, and so uh, yeah, absolutely, they should show empathy. I agree with this, and and. Uh, I think, I think actually I want to connect this with the second thought as well as is, is showing empathy um, and, and showing vulnerability. I think a lot about vulnerability. Um, and I think that actually, um, I think it's really not about being vulnerable, but yeah, it's about showing vulnerability or actually just being honest that it, when you feel, when you feel uncertain, when you feel let down, when you feel like things are hard and you feel like you don't know exactly, that a lot of people call it, you know, being, be vulnerable. You're already vulnerable. You're already feeling like crap. So you're either lying to people or you're telling the truth. That's how I think about vulnerability. You're either in a moment that you can actually connect with people by sharing how you're feeling, or you can hide how you're feeling. And so being vulnerable in my uh, view is really about making a decision to unite with the person that you're talking to or the 200 people you're talking to. And if it's a hard message, just, just unite with them there on how you're feeling in that moment and go through it versus just deciding not to. Um, and yeah, truthfulness is the foundation of anything. Um, and, and I found that, um, 
to be true in my own personal life a lot. And also that we've gone through, um, we've gone through layoffs in the past. And when you're really honest and upfront with people, if that has to happen, I find that actually people reward you by saying thanks that they understand. Uh, if you hide that from them and you and you tell them the last moment and and you and you tell them you try to use a word like you know what you understand why I didn't why I wasn't upfront with you right this was a really hard thing they will say no I'll never understand that and I don't know why you weren't honest honest with me because I'm human probably could have told me the truth a long time ago <clears throat> so I just want to make sure that uh, that there is no in my mind um, disconnect between being a great leader, building a great company, working in a fantastic organization, trying to optimize profit, and actually you do that by treating people. I also wanna push back just a little bit that people over profit. I think we're actually coming into a new era that you don't have to decide, that there won't be a choice. People only wanna work for companies that they feel like they're respected and valued. Um, and so when you're respecting your people, that's how you'll make a profit. You don't have to actually choose um, between the two. It's the only way to be able to do so. Um, so spend as much time or more thinking about how you'll connect with people um, as how your presentation will look. So this, this is like, maybe if I had like a manifesto, that this is beautiful thought. This is like, I believe this in my heart more than anything else. Um, in this presentation, I've been thinking about it for weeks. I've been trying to think of what, what I wanted to convey about the importance of when you deeply respect people one-on-one. -on -one, uh, and I prepared zero slides um, because I think that I wanted to be able to get the essence of it. And, and the essence of it is that, um, and I really feel that it doesn't matter if it's a weekly stand-up, it doesn't matter if it's a board presentation, it doesn't matter if I'm on stage with 2,000 people in LA, um, I need to make sure that I'm conveying something, which is that the message I want to get across has rewarded me each time. I have made the mistake. Um, the most famous thing that I said is that uh, good judgment comes from experience, and experience, well, that comes from bad judgment. Um, so having made very many amazing PowerPoint presentations that actually didn't land because the presentation looked good, but the content was empty, um, I've been able to actually help revise that in my own practice as a leader to understand that. So let's go through a few more and we'll give you a couple minute break in between the two. So there's genuine um, versus per, um, perfection, there's honesty, um, and with each question I noticed that more and more people believe their thoughts mattered the more they wanted to share their thoughts. Yes. Absolutely. The more they think their thoughts matter, the more they want to share their thoughts. If they don't believe their thoughts matter, this is why open-ended surveys don't necessarily work. Um, because when you when you aren't really sure that your thoughts are going to get heard, um, you're probably not willing to share them too much. Collaboration wins over hierarchy. It's the new way of leadership. Um, this is, of course, an arguable sort of point, but I think it's a beautiful thought. Um, and that... Uh, yeah, this is collaboration, culture, we'll eat strategy for breakfast. I appreciate you saying this, I haven't been at the other ones, but the format, I think all I did, the thing that's most duplicatable and replicatable for all of you trying to, if you ever wonder, uh, you know what, I don't have slides, I don't have something well rehearsed, I think I'm just gonna uh, get a really strong message and be able to actually connect people and speak like that. Um, the number of times I've been rewarded to say, hey, this is a fantastic session, where in fact, actually you were most of the session, you actually thought together, I'm sort of like coming along and talking about what you're sharing with me. And this ends up being a fantastic session because I'm just facilitating an awesome group interaction. I'm not actually trying to impart my wisdom too much on you. I'm trying to just show you that actually the wisdom to get through all this, it's inside of us. It's, it's what we know how to do. And all we need to do is access that from all the people that we're meant to serve. And if you're not serving the people you're meant to lead, you're making a mistake. Um, I'm going to go through um, two more thoughts, then I'm going to cut it off. Um, the human element is always important. Thank you a zillion times, um, thousand percent agree. Um, I'm surprised as to how much I enjoyed the process and look forward to seeing how others rated my thoughts. Um, so thought exchange, of course, you can never know um, who shared what thought, but I'll tell you in an organization, it comes along with uh, my my joke about, how, well, my sister's one of them. How can you, um, how can you tell when someone's an, an, an Ironman athlete? Um, the joke is, you don't have to tell, they'll tell you. They don't, um, here's the thing about thought exchange and the top thought is that uh, how can you tell who shared the top thought in a thought exchange? Same joke, you don't have to tell. In fact, you can't tell, you'll never know, but don't worry, they'll tell you. Because it's whenever you get your thought coming to the top, you tend to ping the leader and say, just so you know, FYI, that what was mine up there and I'm feeling pretty good. Um, and I think, by the way, this is something that is, uh, it's everywhere we're seeing right now, it doesn't matter whether it's D-Nice uh, 
spending every night or Jimmy Fallon coming from home or people that are, are giving away platforms for free, which many of you are, um, is that prioritization, pe people over money and productivity is what's happening right now. And the magic things we're finding out that actually when you do that, the money and the productivity actually can follow up. So how you treat people now will be remembered. So I want to thank everybody for coming to the session. I appreciate that you actually created the session by uh, sharing all the content for the session and allow me to kibitz along the sideline. Uh, and I just encourage you to show up um, and, and be who you are in these um, uh, remote meetings with people. Show up as your whole self and people will reward you with, uh, with trust and respect for, for a long time to come. Hope the rest of the sessions uh, go real well. That's it for me.